Cheers, guys. Epics 911, welcome to the Sunday, June 4th, 2017 edition of VR News. Gonna start with a game called Theseus, which we're gonna feature in the gaming recap video. It bills itself as an action adventure game that takes place in ancient Greece. If you're watching the gameplay trailer, uh, which I'm also gonna feature in the gaming recap video, but I'll have the link for you below. You know, you wouldn't, you would be forgiven for thinking it looks a lot like God of War inspired, right? But I'm gonna dial it back even further and say, nay, tis inspired, but not by God of War. It's inspired by still one of my favorite movies of all time, 1981's Clash of the Titans original with Harry Hamlin, the best. Well, right up there with Sinbad and Golden Voyage or Eye of the Tiger. Clay animation of all time. It's that good, right? Top 20 movie. And interestingly enough, Harry Hamlin, who played Perseus in Clash of the Titans, reprised his role as the character in God of War's sequel, God of War 2. So these things always come full circle. Don't know the price yet. We know it looks fantastic and that it's an action adventure. We just don't know when and how much, but hopefully as we get closer, maybe even at E3, we get word on when this will be released. Next news story, Vive trackers can turn the Manus VR gloves into fully positional controlled or tracked controllers rather. Now, the Manus gloves on their own, and we've looked at these, are pretty damn amazing. There's no positional tracking, but finger movement tracked completely. So you can sit and basically with these finger all day long, absolutely no issues. All your fingers are tracked while you do so. The beauty is slap a Vive tracker on it. And now suddenly, in addition to your fingers being tracked, both hands are tracked and it looks amazing. Now I'm gonna have a video in the link below, have a look at it and tell me that isn't the future of VR. That is how we want it all to kind of look and work and we're getting there. My hope is future iterations or devices like HTC's tracker are smaller, right? I get the reason for that now, but wouldn't it be amazing if we could get these things, you know, maybe the size of a quarter, right? An American US 25 cent piece. That would be amazing. And it would make stuff like this a lot easier because right now it kind of looks like some horribly gaudy fashion jewelry bracelet that you're wearing with your glove. Uh, smaller versions would just look so much better aesthetically, even if functional, you know, it does the job. So check that out, check that out in the video. Can't wait till we get tracking like that. All right, next news story, Copen revealing the world's, according to them, smallest virtual reality headset. 2K by 2K resolution per eye with a refresh rate, get this, of 120 hertz, which is pretty damn good. Um, basically the PlayStation VRs is too, but because of uh, reprojection and all the techniques that the PlayStation VR uses, it's rarely ever natively running at 120 hertz, right? Without the tricks. But uh, for Copen, it does. And they are using an OLED micro display. Probably got a picture up of it right now. Speaking of quarters, you see this thing, I believe it's a quarter next to a quarter, and you get an idea of just how small the screens are for this. The resolution, fantastic. Now the figure is a bit misleading as the horizontal resolution is per eye uh, and cannot resolve 3,840 horizontal pixels required for the you know, UHD image equivalent. But with that said, we are talking five times the number that existing Samsung uh, panels in the Vive and Rift have, which is a whole different world of resolution. And I would be super comfortable, even without having tested them and saying, the screen door effect for the majority of people, 99%, is probably gonna be 
non-existent. So very cool, cute little piece of kit. No word on exact price or availability uh, or even what their marketing plan for these are, but they do exist and they will get released one day. All right, next up, I really enjoyed this article. I know we touched on this a little while ago, and that is uh, racing simulator controllers, right? And that I've harped a million times and now a million and first on getting the right controllers for the right type of game to enhance the immersion in VR even more. Obviously for racing sims, that's steering wheel and pedals. Now in that story, I didn't really give a good breakdown and that's the strength of this piece on Road to VR, they do do that. The article is three sections. The first one, the basics, covers the VR headset, basically your foundation, whether it's Rift or Vive. Uh, second section is kit recommendations. And man, they break it down right from Rookie, which is $175 to $250 range. Remember, even the cheapest steering wheel isn't cheap, right? Um, but again, so worth it given how they improve immersion for racing. So they've got four categories. Uh, rookie, $175 to $250 bucks US. Enthusiast, $500 to $1,000. Pro, 1500 to 3000 Yeah, it gets that expensive. And then Extreme, which is 5000 plus US dollars, which is absolutely crazy. Puts you in the kind of lunacy as people who build their own arcade cabinets. But hey, if you love it and you like it and you're going to use it a lot, why not, right? If that's your thing, people spend money on all kinds of crazy hobbies, right? To me, spending 5000 on a Golf club set would be lunacy, but to some people, wouldn't even hesitate. That's that's their hobby, right? This is ours. So yeah, look at that breakdown. Does a way better job uh, than when I spoke about it last. And then the third section is optional accessories, shifters, steering wheel rims, and button boxes. But the other thing I like about this article, guys, is the cockpit aspect. They really dig into that and show you a couple of different examples where previously I just showed one. And if you're gonna go to that kind of crazy expense, right, buy that expensive wheel and pedal, nothing more frustrating than having them slip on the floor or the clamp come loose mid-game from your desk. And it happens more frequently than you'd think. So having this type of a cockpit set up to mount your stuff professionally to, and then you sit inside it, whole new world of immersion, even within wheel and pedal sets, right? It just kicks it up even again. So check that out. If you're at all interested, urge you to go to the link, have a read of that article. You will have a much better idea of what you need to get to get the best out of racing, simulation racing in virtual reality. Next news story, uh, Palmer, lucky again. <laughs> so we talked last time about his next thing possibly being a startup, my gut instinct telling me it was that, and it still very well may be, it's just doesn't look like it's going to be hardware related, it may be game related. Now, we mentioned he was big into anime and manga, that's his thing. Well, he also likes a lot of shows, uh, you know, that have a sci-fi bent to him, like Sword Art Online, which deals with the subject matter that he spent a good chunk of his life, right? Virtual reality. It's brain controlled, way more sophisticated, but it's very similar. And he's been asked by his own math, probably a thousand plus times, have you seen Sword Art Online, right? Sword Art Online. Yes, he has. And uh, his next project probably involving that similar style of VR game. But, and this is huge for him, and it's kind of the focus of the article, it's got to have real life consequences. Now, I don't think he's proposing, you know, having something club you over the head if you do something stupid in the game or you know, cut off uh, airflow, like nothing crazy extreme like that, but he wants real world ramifications. What is that? Do you lose real money, right? You know, with a lot of those things, the systems can still be gamed. 
Now, he's not getting into it now, he says he wants to hold off until he's ready to announce, but I am very curious what he means by real-world consequences to the play style, right? And the next and last story, just a little bit of the absurd guys, uh, billing themselves as the first VR wedding. And technically, they're not correct. Uh, based on the research in the article, the first actually took place in 1994, kind of when that first wave hype for VR came about. And it cost them, bride and groom, about a million dollars at the time. And the resolution and latency was crap. We know all of that, right? So this isn't technically the first, but it is the first with modern virtual reality consumer gear, right? Certainly that VR aspect not going to cost a million dollars. Now, the author who took part in the wedding, because there was a limited amount of people who were actually able to be physical avatars in the wedding, he said just a bunch of stuff, and even the best planned weddings generally have stuff go wrong, right? This wedding, absolutely no exception. And I thought this was funny. I laughed so hard. He goes, Normally at weddings, you know, when people are wiping their eyes and stuff, it's to wipe tears away. Well, we had our HMDs on our head so long for this wedding, the only wiping we were doing was the condensation. In other words, everybody started fogging up. We constantly take them off to wipe the dew away, right? And then, of course, positioning. Movement wasn't really thought out well. So numerous times through the ceremony, the physical avatars would literally appear in the middle of the bride and groom, you know, while they're taking their vow. So anyways, funny as hell. Read the entire thing. I probably didn't translate that very well, but it was funny, I assure you, if you want a good chuckle. All right, guys, that is it for the Sunday edition of VR News. Hope you guys had a kick arse weekend and uh now the week starts well not for a few hours yet guys as always cheers